On this first step, we're going to be assembling the base of our enclosure. So what we'll need is our extrusion for this configuration, which is the 510. And we'll also need four of the three-way corner connectors. As you can see, I've already inserted my set screws just for ease of assembly. And the four will be necessary to assemble the base panel here of the enclosure. So first starting with the smaller pieces of extrusion here for the 510, I'm simply going to insert my three-way corner connectors and I'm going to fasten down the set screw. Now you'll notice that the way that I'm inserting these three-way corner connectors is with the two outer ends of the three-way corner connector facing upright, and that's to accept our vertical pieces of extrusion for the enclosure. So make sure that the orientation does match what I have here. And then for the opposite end here of the extrusion, I'll add an additional three-way corner connector. So now just laying this piece of extrusion here, which is 500 millimeters in length, this is a 510. The 500 millimeter will be for the length, and then of course the 1000 millimeter will be for the width. So before we add the front 20 by 20, we need to add in our hidden 90 degree corner connectors. So this is gonna strengthen just the front end of the enclosure. So simply insert the hidden corner connector and tighten that down with that set screw that's inserted. And then we'll do the same thing for the other side. And then we can go ahead and add that to our three-way corner connectors. And now that we have our base frame complete, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be installing our verticals. So based on this configuration, the 510, we'll be utilizing the extrusion lengths for the verticals. So basically for each configuration sold of the enclosures, each one has a particular parts list with guides on which length extrusion is used for each part of the assembly. So for this configuration in particular, the 750 millimeter extrusion is used for the verticals. So that's the next step on this build. I'm gonna go ahead and install each one of these verticals. And from there, we will tighten down each set screw. On this next step, we're going to be inserting our panels next. For these panels, once again, uh, the dimensions are offered in the instructions for your configuration in particular. For the 510, I have these panels cut down specifically. So I'm going to go ahead and slide these into the tracks of the 20 by 20s. Okay, now that we have the panels inserted, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be adding our 20 by 60 header, which is going to be placed at the top of the enclosure. We're gonna use our 20 by 60 that comes with the 510, and we're going to add in our 90 degree hidden corner connectors to each side of the 20 by 60. Now that we have the 20 by 60 in place, we're gonna go ahead and insert our three-way corner connectors. And basically we install the 20 by 60 first, just to adjust that position. It's a little bit easier to access the ends of the V-slot once we have it set. So what I did is I loosened each 90 degree joining connector here, so I can slightly pull my 20 by 20 out. So you can see the left side is now inserted. Pretty simple adjustment. You can just loosen up that inside 90 degree corner bracket and then slide in your three-way corner connector. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the right side. Now that we have the three-way corner connectors in place, we'll go ahead and fasten down our inside 90 degree corner connectors. And then we'll tighten down the set screws on our three-way corner connectors. Okay, now that we have that complete, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're gonna be assembling our top panel. So what we need is our 20 by 20 extrusions for the top here. Let's see that we only have one 20 by 20 at this length because the 20 by 60 here will enclose the rest of the panel. So basically what we need to do is go ahead and insert our three-way corner connectors and build up a U-shaped frame here and insert our panel. So starting with the longest piece here, I'm gonna go ahead and insert my three-way corner connector. Once again, you can see my set screws are fully inserted and we'll just go ahead and tighten down our three-way corner connectors on each side of the 20 by 20. And once we have those in place, we'll go ahead and add our additional 20 by 20s. And once we have those inserted, we'll go ahead and slide our panel into this frame. And also one thing you'll notice is my top panel here is notched, and that's for the purpose of being able to slide this into the front of the enclosure because the front of the enclosure utilizes the inside corner brackets. Okay, now that we have our panel inserted, we're gonna go ahead and insert that to the top of our enclosure. 
Okay, once the top panel is in place, we're gonna go through and tighten down all the set screws on the three-way corner connectors. Now that we have all of our three-way corner connectors attached to the set screws, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're gonna be building the doors for the front of the enclosure. So basically what we need is our extrusion for the doors specifically, and for the 510 configuration, you can see that my measurements will be specific to this enclosure. And then we'll need four 90 degree joining plates, 20, M5 eight millimeter screws, 20 M5 T-nuts, and then our door handle, which comes with the hardware, which is two T-nuts and two M5 10 millimeter screws. To get started, basically we're gonna lay out the structure of the door. So the longer pieces are gonna be for the sides on this configuration, and that's what you should see there. So we're gonna build up this structure first, then slide in our acrylic. So basically what we need to do now is go ahead and insert our T-nuts. We're gonna be using the 90 degree jointing plates to build up the structure. So the orientation of the plates will basically reside like so. So basically what we need to add in is two T-nuts for this side piece of extrusion. And then for the top, we'll have three on the left side and then three on the right side. So we'll go ahead and insert six T-nuts. So next we'll go ahead and mount our 90 degree joining plate into position. I'm gonna slide my T-nuts down and we use our eight millimeter screws to mount those into place. Okay, now that we have the left side complete, let's go ahead and move to the right side. Once again, for the side piece of extrusion, we're gonna insert two of our T-knots for the top 90 degree joining plate. Now that we have the right side mounted, we're gonna go ahead and slide our cast acrylic into the bottom and then add our additional 90 degree joining plates to the bottom end of the door. Okay, now that we have the acrylic in place, we're going to go ahead and add our additional components here to the right and left side of the bottom of the door. Before adding the bottom piece of the structure, we need to go ahead and add our T-nuts for the 90 degree joining plate. So we'll add two to this side of the extrusion. And also for the opposite side, we need to insert our standard T-nuts for our door handle. So we'll take two more T-nuts and insert those on the opposite side of the extrusion. Now also for the left side, we need to go ahead and add in two T-nuts. And then for our bottom piece of V-slot, we need to add a total of six T-nuts. Starting with the right side first, we'll go ahead and attach our 90 degree joining plate. Okay, now that we have the right side complete, we'll go ahead and move to the left side. Okay, now that we have the left side complete, we're gonna go ahead and rotate this to the front side of the door, and we're gonna add our door handle. We'll see here on the left side, we have our T-nuts for our door handle. So basically for whichever configuration that you do have, you're basically gonna find the center of the extrusion here and then mount your door handle. So now that we have the right door complete, we're basically gonna do the same exact assembly for our left door, and then we'll add our hinges to each door and start to assemble this to the front of our structure here of the enclosure. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Next, we'll be adding our hinges to each side of the door. So what we have is two hinges per door. As you can see, we have both of our doors built up now. So what we're gonna do is take the, the hinge here and align it to the right side here. I'm gonna start with the right door first. And basically, you're gonna take the hardware that comes with your hinges, add some drop-in T-nuts to the screws. And what I'm gonna do is align the hinge to the bottom of the 20 by 20 here. And I'm going to add one more hinge to the top of the door here. Once again, at the top edge of the 20 by 20, I'm going to go ahead and add that hinge. Next, I'm going to add the hardware to the other side of the hinge so we can mount it to the 20 by 20 here on the front of the enclosure. Now that we have the right side in place, we'll go ahead and work to the left side now. So now that we have both doors installed, you can see we have a nice structurally sound enclosure here. See we have plenty of space here for any 510 configuration. It's just a really well designed enclosure. Hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure to stay tuned for future videos, and we'll catch you next time.